This video will give you an overview of digital collectibles, Web3 and blockchain. I'll take you from the fundamentals of Web3 to selling your own NFT. See the chapters in description for timestamps. You'll also find cards like these for further details on specific topic. Watch till the end as I've condensed all the essential topics and my own experience into a short one hour lecture for the students of Symbiosis College in Pune. Make sure to subscribe and like and comment your favorite takeaways. How many of your people here are from entrepreneurship? Uh, how many from marketing, banking, and liberal arts, arts? Some are from the artists. Okay, how many participated in Indrajan? Okay, great. So, let's go. So, what are you here for? Career opportunities, how to make money. What do you want to know? You don't, you don't know about Web3, Metaverse, Crypto, how to sell internationally. And uh, I'll collect your first NFT. Yeah, if you, you pay attention to the end, you might even get your own NFT today. How many of you all have own an Ethereum address? No, you don't know what I'm talking about. Okay, cool. Great then. So, alright. This is an ape, this is a monkey. How much do you think this, was, this is valued at? What is the selling price of this monkey? That might be greater than crypto as well. Yeah, but it's it is traded in crypto, but the valuation, how much would it be? Guess any guess. Somebody said two crores, right? Okay. Eleven crores. It was it was sold at 11, 11 crores a couple of months ago. Yeah. Um, and it was only ten thousand. If you had if somebody had bought this in May twenty twenty one, that's just like two years ago. Imagine how many X the returns you made on that. So 10,000 Indian rupees to 11 crores. This, what does this look like? Collage, yeah, that's right. And how much do you think this is, this was so that? <laughs> 50 crores. Okay, any more cases? Think big guys, come on. 563 crores. So yeah, 10x of what our friend mentioned. 69 million US dollars in Bitcoin. So this is done by artist. His everyday works of 5,000 days have been stitched together and uh, sold as an NFT. His name is Beeple, he's very famous. You can check him out. And what do you think is the value of these NFTs? Hey, you'll have to find out. These are my NFTs. These are these are the artworks that I created. So the is there a pointer? Okay, let me see my cursor. Yeah. So these three are three D animations. These four. These are AI generated. This is a collage. This is also a video. Like the real NFT is a animated video with me standing in it. And this is again. Yeah, this one, this one which you had seen, yeah, and this is another one, uh, one of them. So, as a friend announced that I've been a speaker in London, I've also been invited in New York, so this is me talking in London. I have also, I am also curator, so just like uh, if we had this session one week ago, I would have given this chance for you also to participate. Uh, so it's happening on the 8th to 15th March in Beijing. It's a very huge exhibition um, in Beijing. So I'm a curator of that. I've also displayed my art myself globally. So you can see this one is from Dubai. This was in France. This was this is this was in Paris, and this is in uh, Beijing. I am also host of. A podcast called Rock Class Radio, where we love to have conversations that 
expand your mind and inspire your curiosity. So do check it out, it's pretty awesome. These are the previous guests we had. So it's a variety of guests, not just um, NFT collectors or artists, but we had Major General of Indian Army, IBM specialist, ISRO scientist to kid patrons to uh, what do you say, CEO of a Bitcoin company called that and more. I also do Twitter Spaces, I host Twitter Spaces, this is the schedule for March. So how many of you are actually active on Twitter? What do you do on Twitter? Just memes, scrolls. Just memes. Scrolls. Okay, I used to use Twitter for uh, maybe complaining about some products or something because the companies are more active in responding there in their own website. But now, Twitter is the place where you need to be for all the Web3 and NFT activities. So, hop into the space. Twitter space is like conference. It's like an audio conference. You can participate, talk, interact, know more about it, present your works. So, that is Twitter Spaces. Now, on to the main topic. Web3. How many of you have heard about Web3 before? No idea? Get idea. Uh, so, Web1, web which was still 2004, probably most of you all are born after that. So, it was, it used to be just one page reflecting, you can just read on it, like a newspaper, you cannot interact with it. Then came the Web2, which we are living in right now. From 2014, from from 2005 to now, like our Facebooks and Instagrams, which is social media, right? We are interacting and creating content in it. And Web3 is which we are going to talk about today, is where we can own the content. So in Web3, Web1, only the creator of the website was able to put out content and they were, they were owning it. In Web2, owner was different, but users are different. We are the users, we are the creators, right? And now it's the time for Web3, where we also we create content and also we can own it and sell it and earn on it. In other words, Web1 is for reading, Web2 is for reading and writing, Web3 is for reading, writing and owning. Web3 is decentralized, which means it doesn't have a central authority. There's no central bank or central government who's taking control, not even a central company. So Facebook is central, right? If they close down, all the data will be lost with them. So that is all central and decentralized is no one person can tamper with the data. So that is decentralized. Second is, these are the properties of Web3, okay? Immutable, which means it cannot be changed. As it is decentralized, not one person or entity has a control over it to make any changes. You cannot change any data on that, uh, changing mark sheets or change whatever. So once it is there on the blockchain, it is there on the blockchain. It's also permissionless. What does it mean by permissionless? So now, when you make a bank account, when we log into Google or Facebook, they ask for KYC, right? Know your customers, you have to give in a lot of data to them, give your email, your phone numbers, your birth certificate, your Kundali, everything. So this, uh, in, in Web3 you don't need to do that. One wallet is sufficient. It's a random string of numbers that you own that you can enter and access the web. So it's permissionless. And with that wallet you also get your identity with that. So you have to make different accounts on different platforms, right? Twitter is different, Facebook is different, but the whole signing up process again and again, again and again. But when it comes to Web3, Web3 websites and Web3 protocols that are coming in, only one is enough. One wallet you have, your one number, identity you have, you can connect that with every everything, everywhere. So all your data is connected to one ID. Isn't that cool? Like you can just in one click you can enter any website or do anything or all your record and history is kept together at one place. That is Web3. Web now Web3 is a larger term and now we will talk of 
or what things come under it. Metaverse. How many have of you all have heard about metaverse? Awesome. How many of you play games? Sad life, man. What do you what do other people do? Sorry? So you play physical games, okay. Yeah, that's cool. I used to play rugby. Okay, any one of them. So metaverse is got very popular when Facebook changed its name to Meta. When you see oh, your WhatsApp, when you see Instagram, you'll always see this message, right? Meta. So Facebook has changed the parent company's name from Facebook to Meta. Meta for Metaverse. Because they are building a whole system of interacting virtually in a 3D space. So that is usually Metaverse, the virtual reality space. So there are many platforms that you can create. You can create your own worlds there. So Crypto Voxels is a place, Decentraland is a place. I've got a podcast video of the faces of Crypto Voxels who takes us through the process of creating your own world. I'll, I'll show you the next slide about it. What is Metaverse? It's for entertainment. It gives an immersive art and visual, uh, AR and VR experience. As I said, you can create your own world within. it. You can create your own virtual gallery. So now, you can display your artworks that you create, artworks that you have collected, anything you want to showcase. Any of you all are want to pursue fashion? Okay, great. So you can even you can even set up your dress and showcase it there, and people can actually walk around it and see it and check it out. So that all that thing are possible with virtual galleries, and you can all, you can also start. Creating it. I have also got my virtual gallery. I'll share links and you can test it out how it looks. Gaming. Now, why gaming I have mentioned in the title itself? Um, which game do you all play? Which is the most popular game these days? Valorant. PUBG. Valorant. Valorant? Valorant. What else? FIFA. FIFA. COD. GTA. Anybody play Dota? Dota 2? Okay. So, um, can you take your guns from COD or and take it to Valorant? Or take Valorant's assets that you have won and bring it to COD or PUBG? Can you? And uh, what happens if you lose? Do you still have retain that data or do you lose that data? Or the points you want? Do you have to restart it from the beginning? Okay. So, here what you can do is, what Web3 allows you is ownership. This is what you can do with Web3 games as they are progressing. You can take a PUBG pan, I've seen that pan in the panels, and you can hit uh, your Valorant players also with that pan, which you had earned in PUBG. So, intertransferability of assets, which are digital, which can be used in gaming, so even Reliance has made announcement that they are working big on gaming with 5G technology and the internet speed becoming much better Web gaming is one of the industries that are going to boom um, You can create your own worlds, you can be your own personality there, whomever you want you can be So that is Metaverse in Web3 Play to earn games Do you get money for playing any of the games you mentioned? You usually have to pay right? So if there are some play to earn games if you search uh, where you get digital where you get crypto for playing the games and then you can exchange it later on. So that is that is a possibility. A lot of people in Philippines and many other places are making use of that. So you can play the games and also sell your assets to somebody who wants it. Ever thought about it before? You go to a level, you earn some empire or whatever it is and then you can sell it to other, other person, that's possible with Web3. So, um, these are the two episodes I would recommend you to check out on my Rock Lads radio. He talks about, Eugene talks about, he's an expert in metaverse and virtual worlds, he'll talk about that. And uh, with BitPixie's episode, you'll learn how to create your own world in crypto voxels. So, check it out. Now, what is all this based on? Blockchain. How many of you have heard 
about top chain to come. So what have you heard? Like what what is it? Anybody wants to tell me what do you know about blockchain? It's like a decentralized ledger where you can um, like so there are block blocks everywhere. If you want to add some information, you can create a new block, and that block is connected to the previous block and the block forward. And all the um, systems or all the computers or nodes in that central system have to approve that um, block for it to be added in that chain. So, so let's say you're a for That's awesome. So now one word you everything was correct in what you said except the part it's central. Yeah, it's not central. Yeah, it's, it's central. all decentralized. So what is ledger? Does that question take you back to your first year memories? <laughs> or F by G C so yeah, it's a globally distributed ledger. It's a record of all the transaction and database. Which is distributed, which is on nodes. Nodes are computers basically. So, how many of you all have used torrents? So, it's the same way it works. Torrent also saves file across different computers, right? So, this also saves the data across all computers, all thousand, two thousand, and you don't know which computers they are. So, that's usually what is blockchain, where one node also node is computer. When it crashes or somebody is trying to make any changes to that, it cannot happen. There are different copies which rectify that uh, other computer and it goes forward from there. So it is virtually very secure and non-tamperable. So there is no central authority owning owning it. It is trustless, as I said, permission uh, about permission before, and the nodes or the computers. So this is a very interesting episode uh, on blockchain. So we had two people, one Alex from US and a friend from India, who gave perspective on taxes and blockchain and what the respective countries are doing and what is actually possible with blockchain and these technology under under it. So check out this episode. Now coming to cryptocurrency. How many of you know about cryptocurrency? How many of you know Bitcoin? Bitcoin is the general knowledge, no? Yeah. So Bitcoin is the currency, and blockchain is the underlying technology. So Bitcoin is a <coughs> currency made using. It's a use case of blockchain. Currency made with the help of, like all the fundamentals I said about blockchain, are used to create this Bitcoin. Bitcoin is like mother of all coins. It's most popular, most well known. People these days use it mostly for store of value. You just keep it. It's a deflationary currency. It doesn't inflate like, or it doesn't lose value or inflation like everybody knows. Commerce students inflation. It doesn't have inflation. It's all deflationary because the coins in circulation are limited. You cannot print it more. The like governments can print more currency. Bitcoins or other currencies cannot be minted extra. So, Bitcoin is that. How many of you know about Ethereum? Awesome. So, Ethereum is a next step, or it's more advanced than Bitcoin. And when we talk about NFTs, Ethereum is the mother chain of all the NFTs that we talk about. Most trusted, most powerful. So now. Ethereum is not just a currency. Of course, it's a currency, but also gives a block space. So block space is like renting out. If you have a commercial building and you rent out a space for a business. You can do whatever activities in that business. Consider that that hall or room as a block. So you can anybody can do anybody anything on that block. So Ethereum lets you do that. It's also a currency. And it's also transaction fees. So whatever you do, creating, renting out, transferring, doing this and that, you have to pay the fees in Ethereum. There are other chains also which are popular, like uh, Tezos and Solana, uh, which you can check out, check out, and we'll talk more on it. These are all permissionless and borderless. So this is a real life example. When in March last year, 
there were sanctions on the Ukraine and Russia war and people needed funds there. So all of us in the NFT community, I was able to sell my NFTs and transfer those earnings directly. With just two clicks, I was able to transfer it to NGOs working in Ukraine for getting them medicine, for getting them food, whatever. This would have taken me a day or two or a whole week if it, I had gone through the traditional system using SWIFT and bank transfer and validation and all that. So that is what this enables us to do. Then you also don't have to pay any exchange uh, fees or all that jazz which is involved in uh, regular currencies. Back. I talked about transaction fees, right? So we call it, we refer to it as gas fee in, in blockchain and web 3. So what is gas fee? This is a fee that you will have to pay every time. Each and every transaction you need to pay this fee. It is a fee for all the validators, all those computers we talked about, thousands of computers around the world. It is a fee for them to make an entry into the transaction. It's like you're paying an accountant to keep the entry, to keep the journal. Uh, journal. So it's a fee like that, which is which is also gets high, which gets high or low depending on the volume of transaction. Too much demand, demand and supply. Too much demand, high fees. Low demand, it goes down. And it's also it, it is also required for maintaining the systems. We'll talk about uh, the environment issues, but this. This also requires a lot of power and energy, so that piece goes into that as well. So that is crypto and gas fees. On to the main topic of today's session, digital collectibles aka NFTs. NFTs is a word you usually don't understand, right? What, what is NFTs or, yeah, I mean, okay, some techie thing. So let's call it digital collectibles. It's fundamentally a contract. It's a contract that nobody can change, as we talked about properties of blockchain. And on that, on that contract, you can put anything up on that contract. Maybe it be a image file, video file, 3D objects, or even your rent agreements or your uh, brokerage or selling sell sales agreement of the house. All that can be put on a contract which is this, uh, which, which he call as NFTs. Now why is this so cool or so well known or important or why have I spent two years doing this and come here to talk about it? It's because it's, it gives you a good proof of ownership, which is accepted around the world without any government restrictions. So one contract is like mercantile law, right? Law will only be applicable in that country which you are using it not in other countries. So this is a proof of ownership which is validated around the world and you don't need anybody's permission or validation that this is true or wrong. It is on the blockchain, it is done. And how it is done? It gets the power through the underlying technology which, which, it, which has. They have to solve problems to uh, register it and that's a whole different rabbit hole. You can uh, definitely Google it. It is authentic. So it is authentic as for the reasons I mentioned earlier, it provides provenance. What is provenance? A Leonardo da Vinci's one of the paintings was sold at Christie's for a very high price, but there was a debate if it is original or not original. Two, three hundred years works. We only have to rely on some experts, right? Looking at, they have their own techniques to see if it is original or not original or who is the correct owner of it. There are fakes of the right second copy which is pretty good or even better than the first copy sometimes. So that is avoided and you know which is which is uh, which is authentic in this and provenance is a proof of transaction. Who bought from whom, at what point, at what rate. So 100 transactions even before till the date. Land passing on from your great 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 grandfather to your grandfather, father, and so on. That whole record is kept through the blockchain. So, what? So, NFT stands for non fungible tokens, which means unique assets. So, non 
it's not a spongible token. You go to a, you, you are traveling in a rickshaw, you are at your destination, you pull out a 50 rupee or 10 rupee note and give out to the rickshaw wala. And he says, Bhaiya, ya didi am nahi le sakte, bada hua hai, lelo of office. So you pull out another 10 rupee note and give it to him. So that one 10 rupee note in your wallet and that in rickshaw wala's hand is same. It's equal to each other, right? 10 rupee is equal to 10 rupee, no matter what the number is on that note. Right? That is fungible. So, Bitcoin are fungible. We can exchange one Bitcoin to one Bitcoin. We can exchange that, right? Like, it doesn't make any sense. How are you even talking about this factor? But this factor comes into place with NFTs. One NFT is not equal to one NFT. You cannot exchange that ape, that board monkey that I showed you with the painting collage that was showed later on. So, the both are different. Even that ape has um, 9,999 cousins, that's a PFP project, so even in that it is not same. So that is non fungible in simpler words. And fun fact, Nike has sold over 600 pairs of NFT sneakers for 3.1 million dollars. And this is all digital, okay? So. Yeah. You can see the scope and future for this. So why why should it be like why should you take interest in this? Or why should you start creating NFTs? Firstly, it, it gives you access to perpetual royalties, which is not imaginable in the traditional world. You go to a gallery, Darpan Art Gallery, there's close by, there's a gallery here. So do visit. So one person buys a painting from there and sells it to the next person and the next person sells it to the next person. But the artist who created doesn't have a track of all the transactions that happened. Usually the artist gets a very small fee, right? It's only the people doing a second or the third transaction in the auction houses that they get lion's share in that transaction. But what NFT does is, it allows you royalties. So in every transaction we have, you will get royalty. I sell to Sharivam, Sharivam sells to Forum, and then she sells to other people in the class. So every transaction that happens, for whatever amount, I as the creator will get 10% of that, for every transaction. So that is the uniqueness or which is only possible with uh, the technology of blockchain and Web3 and NFTs that we have. Other thing is, it has a global market. So, in Indra, when you create a painting, you will only be showing these paintings to the people who walk in college. Or max to max people who see those selfies of the people who came in the college on their Instagram and want to collect it from you. Isn't it? What else? Nothing really more than that, right? But in, in NFTs, it's a global market. There are websites which I'll show you. You can create and upload there. And viewers across the world can see it all the time. It's not like even like a gallery where which has nine to five timing and you can only see it at that time and only those people locally available. It is 24-7 for everybody, it's available to see and buy and purchase. Payments. Sometimes we usually college delays payments to enter, right? If you want to have experience in the festival. But in this or even even uh, for us, when you grow, you might have to give credits to your uh, clients in some cases for some other things. But but in, when it comes to NFTs, it's one way. And it is hap it happens in technology. You don't even have to observe it or see if it has come or through. You show your UPI to people, no? transaction. So you don't, they don't even need to show that. It is so much secure and precise that the only goods and exchange at the same time simultaneously. Of course, art and other things you can sell without middlemen. You don't need middlemen to sell that. You can display it in the 3D galleries as we discussed. Use cases. Art, photography, music, videos, even physical. Physical paintings like a photo make an NFT out of it. 
3D animation, 3D objects. These are all NFTs that you can start creating today itself. What are the other use cases of this club membership? So, Rockla's club membership, which I have started, which I'll talk about, is a membership that you can join. There are clubs, right? You have an entrepreneurship club, you want to become a member, buy an NFT, and then you are a certified member of the entrepreneurship club. Uh, you can do crowdfunding with this. You have a startup idea, you have something uh, you want to create. You can create an NFT and sell it to your friends, relatives, or even people, unknown people around the world. They can buy, if they like your idea, they can buy in and collect. So you don't have to do all the registration with the shop acts, governments, license, and nothing of that is required. SEC or whatever, you can directly use this as share certificates to collect funds and start using for your startup. So that's this is this enables you to do that. How many of you all love to share selfies on Instagram and whatever other Snapchat? You all use more of Snapchat or Instagram? Yes. Okay, so you all post uh, selfies and you all like, you all get like, feel jealous about who is getting more likes and all that. So, what if you could, what if you could make money, not just likes? Yeah, likes are what happens, we don't have money. But what if you are so idle that you start getting earn, you start getting money for your uh, in post? So that is possible with NFTs. Instagram has already introduced a collectible, a digital collectible. You'll get a notification there. So you can sell those. Somebody likes it too much, it goes viral, sell it off. Isn't it awesome? So now these are now these are real serious uh, businesses coming in, okay? It's not just fun, you can Tell your parents about the potential, and I'm not wasting time on Instagram. Uh, but you are also wasting. That's a whole different topic of how to get away from that algorithm. Uh, that and so imagine an attendance certificate. You attended my lecture today. Guess what? You will get an attendance certificate for this also. So it's imagine you attend or any other you attend. You get instant certificate which you don't have to wait in line or ask your uh, community leaders to okay when are you giving this i need my certificate i still didn't get it name is incorrect or whatever whatever everything is correct and you get it immediately with this technology now you are very impressed by uh, that much i gave lecture today you want to go and start your making your nfts immediately today how do you start what tools can you use so these are some tools you can use. Uh, it can be created with AI. It is so simple, mid-journey if you use. You just tell, I want a, I want a monkey which is wearing hats, uh, who has a blue goggle, which is sitting in a ship or on a chair, whatever, whatever. Your imagination is free. You just type that in and that AI will create an image for you. Within few seconds or a minutes. So that can be used. You can start. You can get a taste of this with uh, Mid Journey. There are other uh, there are other uh, platforms like Dali, Stable Diffusion, Chat GPT is another interesting episode uh, of the Rockland Radio, which I had shared with Sherry Ma'am also. So do not use it for your assignments. Wink, wink. Uh, so <laughs> you can you can use those uh, tools to get information much easier than. Uh, Google. So check out Chat GPT and the Chat GPT episode on Rock Lab Radio. For design, you can use Canva and Adobe um, Express. Many of our students are very uh, talented and creative, right? You create your banners, like you have this banner of mine here, or any other banners uh, or posters or um, posts, anything. For design works, you can use Canva and Adobe Express. It's free to use, very, very simple and easy. For photo editing and photo manipulation, you can use uh, GIMP or GIMP or other online equivalent of that. For video editing, you can use DaVinci Resolve, Midfilm, so on. Blender is the best and open source and easy way to create 3D objects. So do check that out. So once now you have got your NFT ready, your file is ready. Now how to sell it? How to sell it? So you do this. These are some. These are some milestones that some check boxes that you need to clear. 
when you go along. First is you need a wallet. How many of you all have wallets these days? You have, no? Which wallet do you have? Metamask. Metamask. Awesome. Binance. Binance. Good point. Remind me about talking about Binance. So, I was actually asking about wallets in the pocket because with UPI coming in, I was I was thinking, I was wondering if people actually use those wallets these days or not. So yeah, uh, Metamask is uh, one of the best and most widely used wallets. You need a wallet to interact with the blockchain. Your wallet holds your identity, your uh, ID that we talked about. The gateway to blockchain is through the wallets. So this is the first step. Go to Metamask. Um, it is a web extension, it's also an app that you can use. Then there is Ledger. So once you advance a bit in um, in this technology, or if you already have the funds, highly, highly recommend you to get a Ledger wallet. It's like, it looks like a pen drive, but it is cold. What cold meaning? It is, it is not connected to the internet. The secret phrase, the seed phrase is inside that pen drive. So it's very secure. You can have a whole another route about uh, security. You can come on the space and talk about it. And for Tezos, you can use Temple. Seed phrase. I'm going to talk. I'm going to repeat this many times. You got to secure your seed phrase physically. Do not put it on a mail or a Google Doc or somewhere else, because not your keys, not your coins, not your keys. So these are keys, this is a private key. So not your keys, not your NFTs. Whoever has that keys owns the whole of all the mehnat that you did, all the hard work you did, it's gone if somebody gets access to this. So security, first tip starting off. Second, uh, and he talked about Binance. So Binance is a custodial wallet. What does custodial wallet mean? Is you don't see the seed phrase. So there have been times in the history where the exchanges have gone down. Binance is an exchange, so we are talking about exchange now. How to buy Ethereum and Tezos. So you will need Ethereum and Tezos, so you can buy that on Binance or Wazirx. So Binance is most common, Wazirx is also there. So it's an exchange, right? stock exchange. You can send your rupees with UPI and get Ethereum or Tezos or USDT in your wallet through the exchange, but do not, after the transaction, do not leave your currency on the blockchain. You did the transaction, get out. Move that money to your MetaMask or your other wallets, so which are non-custodial. Which So if Binance goes down, no, your money will also be gone down with it. This has happened with big exchanges in the future. A lot of people have lost a lot of Bitcoins and learned by hard, like learned in hard ways about it. So FTX, FTX was in the news. FTX was an exchange, recent example. So it's it's very risky to keep your uh, currency over there. So pull it out, get it in your own wallets. Third step, minting and listing. Who mints um, Indian rupees? RBI. Yeah. So RBI mints Indian rupees, right? So. It is actually creating those notes, but there is Indian, Indian government also means, right? One rupee, I think, one rupee or five rupee coins. All one rupee coins. Okay, yeah. So that is called minting. Now you have to mint your NFTs. Where you can mint, mint is creating. Basically, your image file is turning into NFT, that is minting. Where you can create this, these are the platforms Foundation, Manifold, Object, OpenSea. I have a separate slide for this. Then you promote it. Congrats, you have created your NFT. Now you have to sell it or get attention to it. How do you do that? Best places right now are Twitter Spaces, Twitter Threads, Discord. How many of you have used Discord? All gamers. Ah, no, gamers, no? Uh, yeah, so it is used for uh, the blockchain and NFTs also. And Reddit. How many of you all heard of Reddit? It's an amazing source, guys. There's a subgroup, subreddit for each and everything. You can be anonymous on it. Ask anything and you get good response immediately. Amazing, amazing resource. Make sure you're there on Reddit. 
All things you cannot find on Google and ChatGPT, you will find on Reddit. Because Reddit gives you example from the real user. I have used the Dungeon Resolve as a software. So I have been through the same technical errors. So I can immediately guide the next person that, okay, try this, do this. So you get that um, assistance on Reddit. This is MetaMask. This is what MetaMask looks like. This orange box here. Uh, this is the MetaMask logo. It is very self and explanatory when you go to MetaMask, it will guide you how to go through. But I have pulled out this specific page to show you what a secret recovery phase is, which I was talking about earlier, which you need to save, which is your private key. It's a string of words, which might seem random, which are random, but once you enter that, the wallet opens. Kulja Sensei, sorry. Uh, this is the password to enter that cave. So you need to note these words. It will give you those words. It will give you the sequence. Even the sequence is important. So it will guide you everywhere to that. From this session, you should just take away that. It's very important to secure this at a very safe place. Buying crypto from exchanges. So again, it's very easy to sign up with self explanatory so you can check that on their website. You can use UPI to transfer money and get your Ethereum, buy, buy the tokens that I mentioned. Why do you require Ethereum is also for the gas fees and also note, this is uh, this is thing that it doesn't tell you in advance. When you are transferring your crypto from the Binance wallet to your personal wallet, it will take a cut. Binance takes a cut in that. So it will charge a fees in that. So it's not the, you won't get the 100% amount in your wallet. It will take transaction fees per transaction. So it's better to first when you try, try a small amount, see everything works well or no, and then try to do big amounts at one time. So small, small, because the it's a constant fees. So every transaction will have that fees. So it's better to, it's not percentage, it's it's a constant fee. So it's better to do big value at once. After you have tested it, okay? Try it with small amount first. As I, as I mentioned, withdraw money from exchange and keep in your wallet. Never keep crypto on exchanges or NFTs on exchanges. Minting. Now it's time for minting and listing. So you can, minting is creating the NFTs, upload your image or the file you have, have the title there, have the description, and then you can put it out for sale. Then, then it's minted. Now, minted doesn't mean automatically sellable. For selling, it's a different step. Second step is listing. So you list that NFT in the market. So you list it and you put a price on it. And it can be put in different ways. Also. You can start an auction, you can put a price on it. Can I'll tell you about more strategies in the next slide. So listing is the last factor before selling. So this is another step we need to take. And note that in all the steps in Web3, minting, listing, selling, you will need to pay gas fees. Every transaction in NFTs requires gas fees. Amounts differ, but you'll have to pay that gas fee. So foundation is the best for artists. Tried and tested, best for artists. Manifold, this one is something new which is also highly recommended for creating your own contracts. Then it's OpenSea, which I have started off with, which you want to try out for free. You can use Polygon Chain and start off with OpenSea and test out what is, how it is like. And OpenSea is also an aggregator. So all NFTs created across all Ethereum platforms, you can see on OpenSea. Object is best for Tezos. Now, why do I mention Tezos? It's also a it's also a blockchain a different blockchain which has a more community feeling to it the nfts are at lower price because they're in additions so a fraction of that nft you can own at a lower price it has less gas fees so it's very reasonable and affordable object to check it out minting strategy how you can create these nfts so either it's one of ones like one artwork, one FT, one bottle only I'm telling. Uh, the next one is one of many. So it's like fractionalizing it or creating multiple copies of it. 
It depends on which contract you do it on. So you can create multiple copies of it and that will have additions. So we are not a generation to discuss about comics, right? But comics have these uh, numbers on it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, the way it was printed. Uh, so it will have those numbers on it. The people who buy early get an earlier number. So you can create editions. Second is open editions. So in the second point, it is limited. 100, 50, 20. You decide the number, only these many are going to be printed. In open editions, it's open. It's time-based. Right at this lecture, it's going to start and it will end at the when the lecture ends. So that period is open edition and unlimited NFTs in that. Then it's um, many of many, that if that you saw in the beginning, it's a 10k PFP project. So there are 10,000 of them with different toggles and slight differences. So that's another way and this is the most suitable for crowdfunding or best way to do that. How to sell NFT? There's a special video I've done this. This was my talk in London for NFT uh, London. How to sell NFT to an artist? So you can see the talk on my YouTube. Careers. What careers can you have uh, with in this field or what if you learn more about it, what you can have. You can become a content creator, we talked about Instagram and other things. You can design and develop all the projects, need some designers and creative things in it. You can become a consultant. Uh, become a consultant to go talk to someone and try to onboard symbiosis to blockchain or something like that and take fees for that. You can take governments, you can onboard government. So that blockchain I talk, talk to you about, the person talking from India is consultant to Tamil Nadu government and they have done, done fantastic work. So that's, a, that's an opportunity there. You can become a community manager, community builder on Discord and Twitter spaces. So what's a community manager? You run the Discord, you talk to people there, you cater to them uh, what is happening, you assist them basically. So when it becomes a project, like a startup or business, it's no more a one-line thing. You need different people for different things. You'll be the customer-facing face when you become a community manager. You can become a freelancer. How many of you have already started freelancing on Viber or there are many freelance.com? There's so many. Awesome, yeah, awesome. So you start it off. It doesn't cost you, or it does in some cases, but you can participate in challenges and there and you won't imagine what kind of jobs are available there. So even that prompting, like prompting to create your AI, like giving instructions to AI on what kind of art you want, you can do that. There are jobs for everything. So go and check out Viber and just Google, you'll see other platforms. You can become a trader. How many of you will trade stocks or stuff like that? Okay, so you can trade crypto and NFTs. I personally don't do that. Uh, I'm mostly in like long term because if you're trading, you've got to be 100%, 24/7 focusing on it. Uh, so yeah, that's another thing. Play to earn games that we talked about, whole day play games and all, but that is that will screw with your brain. So I mean, that has to be limited. I mean, health wise, take caution on that. You can become a metaverse architect, or you can hire a team of architects and build your own world and sell the whole world to a company. You can do that. You can do DeFi. How many of you are banking again? How many people are from banking again? Yeah, so I was just talking with Nilova Man and so on, so that you might have to change the name to finance instead of banking because it's decentralized finance now, which totally skips banks. So that is a field that you can dig in and find more about. This is not some hard truths I'm cautioning. So, as an experienced person, it is my moral responsibility to tell you about the caution before that. So, your security is in your own hands. You forgot your password of your bank, you can go to the bank and tell them, uh, give me an OTP, let's regenerate and you have a new password, right? That is possible with banks, but not with NFTs. The 12 words seed phrase I told you about, it is one and the only thing. If it's gone, it's it won't come back. You can see you have, you have so much money in the wallet, but you can just see it, you cannot access it. So that's very important. Your safety is in your own hand. That you are your own banks. And you got to do your own research. So DYOR is something which you will hear very often on spaces and other places. No matter what, even me, even though I'm giving this presentation now, go back and do your own research. 
everybody has a different desk appetite, different things they want to do in the career, and how much time they want to spend. So do it what is suitable to you, right? Do you want a certain step into this? Scams. There are a lot of scams with any new thing. Did you know that people were selling uh, land in North America, where in England, at whatever names they wanted, like whenever in 1500s or whenever America was discovered. So that was happening. Whenever new things happen, scams also happen. They take advantage of. So basically, in, this is across all the scams, right? It is. Um, is it how much time now? Yeah. So yeah, let's just skip that. Scams are there. Uh, one one basic thing is. Um, too good to be true things don't go. I you give me thousand, I'll give you five hundred, five hundred. Uh, you give me five hundred, I'll give you thousand. Don't do all that. Market. You can see this. I'm just going to skip this. It's market is very volatile. Make sure you are aware about that. You are your own marketer. Environmental issues are there. Uh, conclusion. You can just skip that. Next. What next? Start study. Go deeper. Go join spaces. Subscribe to my YouTube. Become a Rock Class Club member. Once you get my link tree, you will get to get all those links. And by the way, this artwork is collaboration of nine artists together. That's also possible only in the three. One artwork created by nine people working together. This NFT changes with time. Also possible only in NFT. Every hour, new image. For infinitely it goes on. Now, to the good part. Congrats to all of you for attending this session. You are, you have won or you have been given a NFT today, right today. So it will look like this. It's a 3D NFT. You can like use it augmented in augmented reality. You can use it in your 3D galleries. They are kept it here. And once you see it on the screen, you can like move it around with the mouse. So yes. So pull out your phones. It's time to get your phones out because you can get your bonus right away for attending this. So why can't the certificate be fast, right? You attend this, this seminar. So have an NFT for it. Or better than having an NFT for an NFT seminar, right? So this is for you, authorizing, and it is and you have attended this space. Till we are we are going into the question answer space, just open it up, sign the link, submit it, because it's time limited. What's the time now? Okay, so you just have half an hour till that link expires. So go to the link, fill the details. You can also go back and edit that form. Um, once you submit, you will see a new link. Click that link. You will have to enter your email ID, get a OTP and congrats. You have your NFT in the wallet. So yeah, we can then communicate and take questions on this, how to transfer it, how to see it. But this is a very innovative way, okay? This is the first time we are doing this uh, technology by um, we are introducing this for onboarding new people into this uh, NFTs. So, like custodial wallets we mentioned about, so this is uh, custodial for NFTs. Without having MetaMask, without having anything, you can directly see this NFT in, in your hand when you fill that second form and do, do those steps. And once you are ready, once you are ready with your MetaMask and all those things, then you can transfer it to your own wallets. Like we talked about exchanges and transferring it to your own wallet. This will be on a custodial wallet that you can get it. This is yours. Just sign up and claim it. And um, you can show it off on Instagram and make your friends feel jealous for missing out this session because it's only valued for half an hour. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, so thank you so much. I would love to have questions if any and yeah, this gives away. Thank you. Yes. Yeah.